Somebody said, choke. Why did Tupac always say Biggie got his dress style from him? When Tupac got his dress style, got his style from Asian Jack? Because Biggie was not talking about no motherfucking Versace and none of that shit that Pac was talking about uh, before Pac. You got to know that Pac did influence Biggie. In, in a lot of things so it's no it's no uh it's no secret all right but me and i we talking to pop about Pac, right <sighs> hold your horses on this one y'all hold your horses on this one y'all boy i done got some information and i'm gonna get ready to go through it <clears throat> Let me see. Now, hold on. Now, I don't know exactly. I'm just going to say anonymous caller sent me this. Let me, uh, hold on. Let me put it on this one. This way, y'all can see it. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to see all of this, but I'm going to put it, the title, right here. This right here, woo! And I ain't even read all of it because I wanted to read it with y'all because I wanted to have natural reactions to what I'm seeing. Y'all see that title? Yeah, how can I uh, let me see if there's a way? Let me see how I can let's see. Is there a way that I could change the way I could view this? I guess not. I'm just, I'm just gonna have to blow it up and move it around. I don't like how it's uh all right. This is called <clears throat> This is on the Tupac murder investigation, right? And the title of it says, Reggie says, I can have you killed at any time, right? Hold on to y'all seats for this one, y'all. All right? Hold on to y'all seats for this one. Y'all ready? All right, let me get the reading. The title is They Toppled the Host, Many Gave Up the Ghost, right? So let's see. A lot of people have died that were direct. Hold on. Let me put up my fair use because I'm using this under fair use. I'm reading this under fair use. Okay. 
because I don't know what's in here. This is all under fair use, all right? A lot of people have died that were directly or indirectly tied to this investigation, said Brent Becker, meaning the murder investigation of Tupac Shakur. He also said Neckbone would be killed later because he knew the identity of the shooters. Neckbone was in fact killed at a later date. Something Heron knows got him smoked. God damn, bro. Oh. Neckbone would be killed later because he knew the identity of the shooters. Neckbone was, in fact, killed. Oh, shit. Hate the way that this they got this shit. How can I change it? There gotta be another way to read this. Like, I know you could change the way. How do you do that? I forgot. What's this? Uh, this is going to kill me if this shit keep jumping off like that. All right, let me see. Wait, was, was Neckbone in one of those cars, y'all? Do anybody, was Neckbone in one of those cars? Because we... We got the Frank and the Outlaws in one car. We got Buntree in the car. You got the girls in the other car. You got Lo and B and them in another car. Was Neckbone, anybody know was Neckbone there? Was Neckbone at the fight? Anybody? No, nobody knows? All right, let me just continue reading. As y'all can see how little the phone is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be... Uh, let me see. It got to be a way to change the way this... It's got to be a way to change the way this is... Okay, I can zoom in. All right, let me just, oh, fuck, this shit keep doing that bullshit, man. Okay. All right, this might do it. Let me see, let me try to add one more. Okay. Yeah, this did it. All right, cool. All right. Let me blow it up one more time. Oh, yeah, that's so much better. All right. Now I can share it with y'all. Let me share it with y'all. All right. Now I can share it with y'all. Hold on. This is going to be a good ass read, boy. Okay. Now, maybe I should do it like this where I'm little. Right? This way y'all can see it with me. 
<coughs> Where we at? All right. So a lot of people have died that were directly or indirectly tied to this investigation. Brent Becker. <coughs> he also said Neckbone would be killed later because he knew the identity of the shooters. Neckbone was, in fact, killed at a later date. Something Heron knows got him smoked. Murders in the immediate aftermath of Tupac Shakur's murder were those affiliated witnesses or with knowledge of the murder. Yak Fula was, in, was an assassination hit and death row records were the first to call it a suicide. Wow. I ain't know they said that was a suicide. I thought everybody always said he got killed. We have the tapes of the telephone calls between Frank Alexander and various death row insiders about this murder. Also, we have the FBI reports that states this was an execution murder. Wow. Ken Cox, Ken Knox, senior lead details. Wait, Ken Knox. Senior Lee details in a police report that New Jersey Crips and Los Angeles Bloods are together in Death Row's Can-Am Studios together a few weeks before Yak Fuller is assassinated in New Jersey. David Kenner is contacted by Las Vegas police to arrange the interview of Yak Fuller. Kenner never arranges the interview and Fuller is killed before Las Vegas investigators can find him on their own. Wow. I know this is going to be good. Michael Moore tried to get Frank Alexander to flip their story so he isn't killed. Too many people are accidentally dying. Why? Wait for an accident to happen. You go on to the other side and you are targeted. They feared that Suge would retaliate. That is why they killed his inner circle before he got out of prison to weaken Suge from putting together muscle to retaliate upon his release and leave him unprotected. Reggie Wright Jr. has ties through his father to Compton police who attempted to steer the investigation toward a conclusion that Orlando Anderson was the shooter in the murder of the Tupac Shakur. Orlando Anderson has an airtight alibi as Las Vegas has cameras everywhere. Corey Edwards tells of seeing Orlando Anderson at the bar about the time of the shooting. Oh, these niggas is full of shit. Oh, hold on, bro. Hold on here. Hold on here. Hold on here. Hold on here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. shit. I got to get on my Instagram for this one, y'all. Hold on. My phone was dead. Y'all see my phone was dead. Hold on. Oh, I got 15. 15%. Whatever y'all could get out of YouTube on 15. 15 just jumped up to 20. That was weird. And jump right back down to 15. Down to 14. Wait, what is this?
don't know. They got this new. I ain't gonna show it yet. I'll do it. I'll do this separate. I'll do it separate. There's that I gotta research that before I talk about it. But there's some good information. All right. All right. Uh Reggie Wright Jr. has ties to his for hold on. I'm live on YouTube, uh, Instagram. Y'all yeah, going there only you see this if you come on uh, uh, YouTube. I'm sure y'all already read this and y'all waiting for me to scroll, but bear with me. Instagram, I'm live. The link is in my stories. All right. So, uh, Reggie Wright Jr. has ties to his father to the Compton police who attempted to steer the investigation toward the conclusion that Orlando Anderson was the shooter in the murder of Tupac Shakur. Orlando Anderson has an airtight alibi as Las Vegas cameras has, as Las Vegas has cameras everywhere. Corey Edwards tells of seeing Orlando Anderson at the bar about the time of the shooting. Las Vegas police are handed Orlando Anderson by Compton police during a raid. They are expected by Compton police to arrest him as he is being handed up on the silver platter as the shooter. Las Vegas police are not even interested in him because they already know about his airtight alibi. Compton police established this pattern. Then they also stared the investigation in the L. Ray Theater murder of Kelly Jamison and stopped LAP investigators from ensuing indictments. So y'all telling me all this time, y'all, they had Orlando Anderson on camera at the bar <laughs> or in the casino. Wait, wait, what they say? At the bar, at the shooting, bro. If Orlando Anderson was at the bar, at because I, I just wanted to know how these, these niggas went to the Luxor Hotel. They went to Sugar House to change. And these niggas ironically just caught it back up with these niggas. So now we know why LAP, I mean, Los Angeles, I mean, excuse me, Las Vegas or Nevada police never arrested Orlando Anderson because they had proof this nigga was not at the fucking scene, bro. Who's lying again, y'all? Wedgie, oh, this is good. Let's go. Let is let's go, bro. Let's go. And like I said, I'm gonna keep it big so y'all can read it for yourself. Las Vegas police are handed Orlando Anderson by Compton police during the raid. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. It's several things. It's several things to uh, look at here, right? One, let's go back to who was that, Fatal or Gaddafi that had the gun that got caught with at the House of Blues that they took the gun. Reggie, that 40 Glock, Reggie had Kevin Hackey go get the gun, give it to his father to put in the Compton evidence. Then remember, his father did the raid on Orlando's house and found the fucking uh, Orlando and had the gun or found the gun, right? 
So now they try to turn them over. Like, yo, this nigga was the shooter, this, that, and the third. Boom, 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 boom. But now we know why Vegas didn't arrest Orlando when they gave him up and fucking went and ran and found the gun in there. Because the nigga was on camera at the time of the shooting. Yeah, it was fatal. Thank you. What are we talking about here? Lady Cuts, what up? What are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? And remember, where did Orlando get come from being the shooter? Greg Caden, Keith E.D. Who told Greg Caden that Southside did it? Reggie. <laughs> Them niggas try to frame Orlando Anderson, bro. Yo, they try to frame this nigga. Wow. Hold on. Let's get back to it. Uh, let's go. Orlando Anderson has an airtight alibi as Las Vegas cameras have because as Las Vegas has cameras everywhere. Corey Edwards tells of seeing Orlando Anderson at the bar about the time of the shooting. Las Vegas police are handed Orlando Anderson by Compton police during a raid. They are expected by Compton police to arrest him as he is being handed up on the silver platter as the shooter. Las Vegas police are not interested in him because they already know about his airtight alibi. Compton police established this pattern when they also steered the investigation in the El Rey Theater murder of Kelly Jameson and stopped LAPD investigators from issuing indictments. Frank Alexander, secret recordings of his telephone calls with death row insiders and reporter Chuck Phillips give insight into inner working of death row records and their ties to Phillips and creating false stories that are planted in the L.A. Times. Chuck Phillips is dismissed when he is caught fabricating a story about the murder of Tupac Shakur, thus solidifying the plan of stories to throw investigators and public opinion off the trail of the real killers of the Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls. September 17th, a confidential informant tells police that Marion Suge Knight delivered a load of AK-47 assault rifles to gang members at the Nickerson Gardens. Whoa. I don't know if I should be reading this. <laughs> They said Neckbone knew the identity of the shooters and that he would be killed. Neckbone was subsequently, subsequently, I can't pronounce it. Hold on. Subsin I know this word. I'm just tongue tied. Subsin Subsequently, subsequently, Negbone was subsequently killed in Texas, which means after a particular thing, this has happened afterward. All right, so he got killed after Pop, right? Subsequently, subsequently killed in Texas. Kathy also discussed the incident on 9 1696. Tupac died 9 13. 9 13. So three days later, 
Neck bone got killed. Kathy was also discussed. Kathy also discussed the incident on 9-1696 with the gangster caravan attempted they stopped by Jada and Yamato. An informant advised him that on 9-1796, AK-47s were delivered in the Nickerson Gardens by Suge Knight's crew and that these same guns were in the aforementioned caravan on 9-6-96-9-16-96. They have already been nine separate drive-by shootings between the Pyru Bloods from Compton and the Southside Compton Crips. Reggie called me. This is about 30 minutes before this happened. Reggie called and cursed me out and everything. As I said, the majority of the time, I will also drive Tupac around. Wait, who is this saying this? Reggie called me. This is about 30 minutes before this happened. Reggie called me and cursed me out and everything. As I said, the majority of the time, I will always drive Tupac around. And so I asked Reggie about two days later, you know, he says that fucking Frank didn't have his gun, this and that, so on and so on. I said, Reggie, I thought you had it all arranged in advance with some attorney they were dealing with down there, some attorney that they had at the time something to do with the club 662, that all the guys were going down there prior to getting authorization from the Vegas police, you know, to carry firearms, which generally they will do it. But you have to go down there in a timely fashion. Two days after Tupac is shot, Kevin Hackey is using the telephone at the hospital to talk to the FBI. A doctor overhears this conversation and asks him who is he providing information to. The Las Vegas Metro Police Department cops got involved in the turf war, an object to Hackey is discussing their case with the FBI and give Hackey until 8 p.m. to get out of town. When Reggie hears about this, he becomes suspicious of Hackey and starts calling him a snitch. Whoa. What? Two days after Tupac is shot, Kevin Hackey is using the telephone at the hospital to talk to the FBI. A doctor overhears this conversation and asks him, who is he providing information to? The Las Vegas Metro Police Department. Cops get involved in the turf war and object to Hackey discussing their case with the FBI and giving Hackey until 8 p.m. to get out of town. When Reggie hears about this, he becomes suspicious of Hackey and starts calling him a snitch. I thought Reggie liked good witnesses. Now niggas are snitches? Which one is it, Reggie? Be a good witness? This is what you hired the cops for, right? To be a good witnesses or now he's a snitch? September 16, 1996, from police laws, AM, Watch officers Jetta and Yamamoto were working a crime suppression detail to address gang activity problems at Death Row Records. This is September 16th, y'all. This is three days after Pac died. 18730 Oxnard Street, Suite 211. Officer Jetta spoke with the head of security at Death Row records reggie wright and was informed by mr wright that since the death of tupac marion suge knight was now using gangsters bloods from compton as his own personal bodyguards and that they were armed officer jetta was familiar with knight's personal vehicle which was there at the time at approximately 0500 hours jettas and yamato observed four vehicles leave death row records and gang caravan fashion. The officers observed Suge Knight in the middle vehicle of the caravan. What is significant 
is that Reggie Wright Jr. informs the police that Suge is now using convicted felons as his own personal bodyguards. Reggie was snitching on Suge about a clear probation violation. Buntry was in the car with Reggie Wright Sr. What? When he got out to pump gas, somebody killed him. Buntry was in a heavy muscle. Buntry was the heavy, heavy muscle of Suge. Reggie Wright Jr. was the one that brought Malcolm Greenwich to that interview. Wait, bro. Wait, 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 wait. What is significant is that Reggie Wright Jr. informs the police that Suge is now using convicted felons as his own personal bodyguards. Reggie was snitching on Suge about a clear probation violation. Buntry was in the car with Reggie Wright Sr. When he got out to pump gas, somebody killed him. Wait a minute, bro. Nigga, what? Hey, Marv James, man. Is this true, Marv James? Your brother was with Reggie's father when he got killed? Somebody gave one of y'all niggas out there that's watching that got access to Buntry. Y'all need to ask him about this, man. Y'all gotta ask y'all gotta ask Buntry about this. Yo, MC8, get him on the Grace to Chronicles. Ask him about this. All right. Get Buntry on your joint. Ask him about this. I ain't got no plug to Buntry. Somebody ask Buntree about this, bro. This nigga was with Reggie Father when he got killed, bro. Ain't he getting out to get gas? Buntree was in the car with Reggie Rice Sr. When he got out to pump gas, somebody killed him. Buntry was the heavy, heavy muscle of Suge. Reggie Wright Jr. was the one that brought Malcolm Greenwich to that interview. Is Malcolm Greenwich Buntry? Let me see what Buntry real name is. No, his name is Alton McDonald. So it ain't him. Let me see. Who killed Buntry? Let's see that. Who killed? Let's see. I remember the mall pyro bank and production manager at Death Row Records was shot dead at a gas station in Compton. The murder was believed to be a result of fighting between two rival sets of the Bloods, the mall pyros and the fruit town pyros. Oh shit. On April 3rd, 2002, McDonald was filling up his car at a gas station in Compton. When the pickup truck pulled up near him, one of the occupants opened fire with the handgun and McDonald was hit several times in the chest. He was taken to St. Francis Medical in Linwood where he died shortly after, late, later that day. Should Knight visit him, visit to the hospital to pay his respects to McDonald's family.
In January two, 2003, Gary, Gary G. Phillips, who was allegedly involved in the shooting of McDonald, was shot and wounded by two of Suge Knight's associates, Terran Andrews and Gregory Shelton. This shit is too deep, bro. Who the fuck is Malcolm Green? What is his name, Malcolm? What? Greenridge. Let me see. The incredible Malcolm Ridge is best known to the world as Edie Amin, a.k.a. Edie the Dawn. So that's Edie Amin. That's the outlaw. Okay, hold on. All right, so Reggie Wright Jr. is the one that brought Edie Amin to that interview. We need to talk to y'all fool fooler. Brent Becker said he left messages with David Kenner about interviewing y'all fool fooler. He got the runaround. And then he was notified that he was murdered in New Jersey. Who is Brent Becker? Is he a cop? Brent Becker must be uh invested. Let's see. I'm sorry, yeah, I got the uh I gotta know what's going on here. SEC enforcement, government investigations. He must have worked as a cop back then. I think he was a cop or some type of investigator. All right. Brent Becker said he left messages with David Kenner about interviewing Yah Fool Fooler. He got the run around and then was notified that he was murdered in New Jersey. The only thing I heard, uh, and I heard it from Reggie Wright Jr., is that earlier that year, around April timeframe, that Trayvon had gotten into a fight at the Lakewood Mall in the Foot Locker, and it was Orlando Anderson. Under the plan, Kenner and Wright Jr. had devised Suge's death was preferable, but Suge being incarcerated with no ability under California law to conduct business from prison was very secure position for them. They had Suge drain all of the working capital out of the bank accounts. They eliminated the account, financial records, they stopped all the activity within the company. The employees were not being paid and loyalty to Shug was wanting. Still, Reggie wasn't worried about the money. Or Still, Reggie wasn't worried about money. He said to Michael Moore, we won't be wanting for anything. He confided in Michael Moore because he knew he had no choice. He knew that Michael Moore had heard, got him, come over, Reggie. 
over Reggie Rice radio at the time of the Tupac shooting and attempted murder of Suge. They exchanged a glance. As long as Reggie could pay more, he would remain silent. Reggie invented work for more. He already had a full-scale mop-up in the aftermath of the shooting. Well, that didn't work. That didn't work, I said. Reggie, if you had, he had like 20 guys working security off-duty cops. I said, why would you have all those guys over here at the hotel and have one guy with Tupac? Not all the time Tupac has been out. Now, all the time Tupac has been out, and I have been with him, I've always went by myself. It was just me and him all the time. About two weeks prior, actually two weeks before he was shot, about 1.30 in the morning on Sunset up here, we saw the sheriffs rolled up. We were at Sunset, and I can't think of the cross street. Right where Sunset and West Hollywood turns into Beverly Hills, they wanted to go out clubbing. Tupac was driving a Rolls with the outlaws in the back. I was in the back of the car. A couple of guys came up along his car and they early model Toyota sedan, dark colored black guys, gang members started flashing all kinds of gang signs, whatever, this and that. I am like, damn, here I am by myself. I exit the car, you know, using caution going up and I pulled my badge and I said, look guys, I'm an off duty cop. Just go ahead and get it and just get out of here. So they started all tight. So they started all sorts of bullshit, this and that. So of course, the group with Tupac, they started acting, you know, come on, let's fight these motherfuckers, this and that. So by the time, so by that time, you know, I told the driver, I said, let me see your hands like this. No, man. Fuck, he ain't going to do this and that. I said, look, motherfucker, by this time I pulled my gun down at the side. I said, look, get your ass on. It is like this. So they turned around and he says, oh, man, geez, he has a gun. And they sped off. I was like. Damn, I put my gun up. We go to Sunset in Fairfax. I believe it is an Arco AM PM up there. I told Tupac, I said, you know what the fuck you are doing? I said, you know what the fuck you are doing? I mean, getting out of here at 1 30 in the morning to get some cigarettes, this and that. And I'm like, Damn, his Rolls Royce is here. The Cadillac is behind it, this and this and that. I don't, this shit is like, I don't know who the fuck is this talking. So I see Saturday, oh, this might be Michael Moore, right? So I, so I see Saturday night detectives pull up, either West Tech or Bel Air Patrol. Two fat, two big fat guys. So I say, damn, they think they really got something here? I am sure. So by that time, I see 150 unit pull up. So I kind of approach him. I have a badge in hand. He says, we just got a call, a 211, somebody trying to rob Tupac Shakur. By that time, it was Christmas. They had every wick, they had every, I guess, every car in West Hollywood, and then some go to that location. And so, of course, and so, of course, I asked Reggie. I said, knowing what went on two weeks prior, why would you have him there by himself? Oh, I guess that's a backstory to tell them that they just had an incident out there where he had to pull some guns. So being that they now they're in Vegas 
and they just had that incident in L.A. that was a close call. Why, knowing that, why would you have Tupac with no security in Vegas when we just had an incident in L.A.? All right, I'm following him now. All right. And why would you have him, you know, Frank is not even a cop. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't he at least have one of the retired cops or the off-duty cops? Because he had quite a few off-duty cops working at this time. So why wouldn't he have one of them with him, basically? I'm not saying that, you know, when you go into Vegas, basically, most of the time they give you common courtesy. But I am saying at least they would have had their firearms with them. Because based upon the fact Reggie was supposed to set up everything for these guys to go down to file the paperwork for Vegas. Which they never did. So he just kind of shunned away from that. So he kind of shunned away from that. Didn't say anything about it. And Frank said, basically, you know, they threatened him because Frank left town thereafter. I think a couple of hours later, he got himself and got up out of there. Basically, he threatened him. Basically, he. Oh, basically, they threatened him what was going. I hate who how this person write. Make me feel like I can't read. Basically, they threatened him what was going to happen. And, of course, Hodgman's office started calling him down once they are going to. Hodgman's office started calling him down once they are going to go ahead and revoke Shug's probation. So basically, he got threatened then. You know, Frank had called me in early November. Reggie wanted him to come out to the office. So I was on duty that night. This has got to be Michael Moore. So I drove over there, and I met Frank. And he says, you know, can you please stand by? I said, you know, I really don't want to get involved with this mess. So whoever the attorney was in there with Reggie, they knew that I was out. I was on duty. They knew that I was out there. And he said, don't bring fucking Kevin's ass in here because he is all pissed off. I guess that would be Kevin Hackey. And so, you know, I figured by that time, of course, his daddy started leaking things in. Well, of course, I had been talking with the FBI and so on and so on. Uh, and about, I would say, March of last year, March or February, I get a call from Reggie out the blue. This is Kevin Hackey talking, y'all. This ain't Michael Moore. This is Kevin Hackey. Kevin. I need a favor. Can you drive for me? This and that. I'm like, what? Can I drive for you? I said, Reggie, what do you think I am? Fucking stupid? I said, you know me well enough to know right now. I said, if you want to do something to me, you want to go ahead and take me out. I said, be a man and take me out. because. He knows if he comes up against me one-on-one, -on -one, he will lose. Reggie says, oh, fuck you, motherfucker. I can have you killed at any time. I said, Reggie, you know where I'm at. I said, you know it is your ball game. Do what you got to do. Reggie's a gangster, man. You got to be careful with Reggie, boy. Reggie is a motherfucking gangster. Reggie says, oh, fuck you, motherfucker. I can have you killed at any time. I said, Reggie, you know where I'm at? I said, you know, it's your ball game. Do what you got to do. But as I said, again, hey, he is trying to set me up. 
he hadn't talked to me for four or five months. He said I was a snitch. The whole shebang. This and this and that. And then all of a sudden he calls me up and wants me to drive for him. You know, I'm surprised Reggie's not in prison. I know he used to hold money. I know he used to handle shit. Oh, this shit is getting even better. Without a catalyst, they would never have received the full cooperation of the Compton Police Department. The murder of Bobby Finch, close to home for the department, provided the, that catalyst. He was the brother of Larry Finch, who was a police officer at the Compton School Police. That made the Tupac murder investigation personal for all the Compton cops. That made them emotional. Easier to stare into certain directions and, and, and passion to put Suge Knight away. For as long as they had nobody to charge with Tupac's or Bobby Finch's murder, they could vent their anger on Suge. Well, how the, why did Bobby Finch get killed? Yo, it's a lot of people got killed around death row, bro. Yo, L.A. is a different place, bro, especially in the 90s. When Reggie Rice Senior suggested they get involved in putting Suge away, they all lined up to participate. Now, it wasn't if, as if Rice Senior had speculated, but it came, it became a certainty that something was going to happen to Suge. Wow, this shit is amazing, bro. September 11th, Bobby Finch is killed in a drive-by shooting at 1513 May Street. His brother is a Compton School police officer. Corey Edwards tells investigators, I warned my neighbor Bobby Finch and his brother Larry about the Mar Pyro probably riding through our neighborhood. Bobby and Larry aren't gang members. Bobby did security and body work and bodyguard work. His brother Larry, who works for Compton Unified School District as a police officer, has his own security company. Bobby would do security for his brother at clubs and also his his damn this phone be dying fast as shit, bro. Bobby would do security work for his brother at clubs and also work for this lawyer named Mitch. Bobby was one of Mitch's bodyguards. Bobby also did security for Tashina Tisha Arnold the actress from the television show, Martin. Pam. Wednesday, September 11th, 30-year-old Bobby Finch dropped off his 10-year-old daughter at 1515 South Mayo, his mother's home in Compton. The home was located in the south end of the South Side Crips known territory. Finch also felt safe. The violence of the past few days would not affect him. Besides, it was too early. Most gang members were awake till all hours of the night. Their mornings were spent snoring or recovering from hangovers caused by 40-ounce bottles of cheap more liquor. <laughs> Sitting behind the wheel of his new Acura, a Honda Civic hatch pulled up. Someone drove up alongside and blasted him, said LAPD homicide detective. So why kill Bobby Finch? If you're going to steer the investigation from within Compton Police, you have to get in the game. Nothing raises the stakes more than a killing close to home of someone they consider to be family. 
Make the investigation personal. Dupe them into believing that the Southside Crips and Mar Piru are engaged in the war and they will unleash a disposable resources to get the killers. But who actually killed Bobby Finch? Kevin Hackey tells investigators, I called Reggie and I said, Reggie, Finch's brother just got killed. How do you know about that? Whatever. I mean, the dispatcher at the Compton School Police, Barbara just called me. This occurred within like three or four minutes because of one of the officers from the Compton College, because Compton College Police, Mario, who also works for part-time for Compton School District Police, where Bobby lived, was like within two blocks of the college. So being they hear, hear the gunshots, Mario was the first guy there soon as Bobby got shot. And you know, I called Reggie three or four minutes later and the incident just occurred because Mario called for help. You know, the Compton College paramedics, our units, our units, our units were tight back then. There was no way in hell Reggie being in Las Vegas, Reggie would have known that soon if that hadn't already been set up. Finch was already, Finch was set up. He walked out of his car, got in the car. He walked out to his car, got in the car, going to take off. Some guy pulled up in the sedan and pumped a couple of rounds through the car. He left his house. Based upon the fact that the statement that Reggie had made to me, he basically said to me, don't mention that to Shug. I already know about it. Oh, shit. Woo! Oh, baby. God damn. This shit got more layers than lasagna. Shit. We ain't never hear about none of this shit. It ain't none of y'all niggas on the West Coast that's told us about none of this. Now watch how many of these niggas start doing these interviews and talking about this. Don't act like you ain't getting it from me. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, how do you know? This just happened within the last three or four minutes. Reggie Wright Jr. talks to his father about the upcoming raids and gets information so that he can prepare the gangs for what's about to happen. They were able to steer the investigation to the locations that had been swept before the raids occurred. Get rid of the guns. Tim Brenner excludes Danny Patton from the list of the blood gang members at the end of his affidavit. But what wasn't certain was who was going to run death row records. After the shooting in Vegas, before Shug's arrest, he was using his inner circle as bodyguards instead of Reggie or right way personal as was customary. Reggie saw this as an opportunity to snitch on Shug by telling the police about this clear probation violation. Wow! Wow! Wow, 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 wow. Shook, stop using Reggie in security at the park. He did not trust that nigga. So not only did Tupac fire this nigga, motherfucking Suge fired this nigga. Now we see why Reggie be throwing Suge under the bus. Wow. This shit is too heavy for me, bro. This shit is too heavy for me, bro.
This shit is too heavy for me. That nigga Reggie's the one that got Suge violated. Allegedly. Whoa! This is all. This shit all makes sense now. This is why this nigga. Oh shit! Niggas ain't been asking Suge the right questions, boy. But what was certain? What? But what was it certain was who was going to run Death Row Records after the shooting in Las in Las Vegas? But before Suge's arrest, he was using his inner circle as bodyguards instead of Reggie or right way personal as was customary. Reggie saw this as an opportunity to snitch on Suge by telling the police about this clear probation violation. And then David Kenner, some fucking strange reason, that nigga magic don't work no more for Suge in the parole violation, but this nigga get a nigga off a of fucking murder. He could get Nate Dogg off a of robbery, but he couldn't get Suge off of a violation? Bro, that nigga got Snoop off a murder. They wanted Suge to go to jail, bro. Nine sixteen ninety six. Three days after Pac got killed, watch officers Jetta and Yamato were working the crime suppress suppression detail to address gang activity problems at Death Row Records, 18730 Oxner Street, Suite 211. Officer Jetty spoke with the head of security at Death Row, Reggie Wright Jr., and was informed by Mr. Wright that since the death of Tupac, Marion Suge Knight was now using gangsters' bloods from the Compton as his own personal bodyguards and that they were armed. This nigga told my niggas is a snitch. This fucking dry snitching ass nigga. Ice T, he's not a dry snitcher, Ice T. His shit is a tsunami. Yo, bro. Oh, shit. Holy shit, bro. Yo, bro. Yo, bro, yo, bro. These niggas lined up my man Marion, bro. If Reggie was going to regain Shook's trust, he was going to need to show him the ultimate grand gesture. As the hearing approached, Reggie and Ken appeared to be working hard to secure Suge Knight's freedom. They also appeared to have a major setback when it was learned that Frank Alexander, the only credible witness, had told investigators that Suge had kicked Orlando Anderson. Reggie had made it very public that Frank was now a rat, a snitch, and that he should be killed. Those rumors got back to Frank quickly. There were many of Frank's friends offering confirmation. Death Row Records wants you dead. Reggie even threatened Frank directly. What are you? What are you and your white wife going to do? Going to hiding? Y'all remember I played that audio yesterday. So many people had accidents. Yak Fuller had been executed and Death Row Records issued rumors about Yak's death as have been an accident and then a suicide. They never passed up an opportunity to create confusion and self-fear. This shit is mind-blowing, bro. 
The confusion caused anything that wasn't nailed down to disappear. The bank accounts were intact. The music masters had been safely moved, but many of the things laying around disappeared between Shug's arrest and his being transferred to prison to serve nine years, to serve his nine year stretch. Lots of the furniture and records were moved to Glendale to create venue problems for investigators wanting to issue search warrants and some of the stuff was being shipped out of state. Suge Knight was being kept in the dark of most of what was happening on the outside. He was, he was arrested with almost no time to prepare for a long absence at the helm of death row records. Don't this shine like R. Kelly and, and this dude that took R. Kelly masters and moved them shits? Yo, bro. So much more is making sense now. So much more is making sense now. The book Murder Rap is released. That pins the murders of Tupac Shakur and Christopher Wallace on the dead guys. The book is written by Greg Caden, who is close to Reggie Wright Jr. A suspect in the Biggie Smalls killing is now a suspect in the Tupac Shakur killing. Greg Caden admits in the book that he had no access to the Christopher Wallace civil trial documents which excludes the most significant portion of the case. The book follows the same storyline as the previous planned stories by LA Times journalist Chuck Phillips. I told y'all, Ray Caden is also the former lead detective on the Christopher Wallace homicide and previous partner of Darian Dupree. Dupree is the cop that leaked the confession letter to Caden. Caden had an additional motive to derail the confession letter, his book and movie deal that will prove worthless if the case is solved in an alternative way, in an alternate way. Caden contacts journalist Chris Blatchford and further attempts to derail the letter with, with Chris. His emails are very similar to the Chuck Phillips secret tape recorded made by Frank Alexander, where instead of asking questions, they attempt to sell a conclusion. On June 24th, 2014, Russell Poole and R.J. Bond met with four representatives from the LAPD and provided them with a copy of the confession letter. They placed special marking on the letter and received assurances that the information would be investigated. Instead, it is leaked. Six days after the letter appears on the internet, Suge Knight is shot in a West Hollywood nightclub by an assailant that yelled, you killed Tupac, as they fire shots at night. The, the, the attempt to derail the confession letter is tracked back to Reggie Wright Jr. <sighs> Darian Dupree. One of the cops that Russell and RJ gave the confession letter to was Greg Caden's partner, who is a close friend and apologist of Reggie Wright Jr. Man, they need to get the indictment papers together, bro. They need to get the indictment papers. Oh, this thing, Greg Caden, his boy, gave him immunity. Oh, God. Reggie Wright Jr. implicated in the letter, wait, confession, wait, hold on, where I left off at. Apologist of Reggie Wright Jr. implicated in the letter as a responsible for the murder of Tupac Shakur and the attempt on Suge Knight on September 7th, 1996. Greg Caden was the first person to talk about the letter on internet after it was given to LAPD. The confession letter given to LAPD has special markings that appeared on the internet with those markings. The LAPD leaked is clearly documented and is the subject of an internal affairs investigation, CF number 14-001995. 
Keep in mind that Darren Dupree illegally accessed LAPD commute computers and cloned cell phones and was reprimanded by LAPD and Greg Caden was responsible for overturning the George Torres Ramos case by what the judge said was his reckless disregard for the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Why do y'all believe Greg Caden, bro? Why do y'all believe this guy? Tupac had begun to recover. When he died, there was a rush to cremate him as somebody had wished. Hold on. Tupac had begun to recover. When he died, there was a rush to cremate him as somebody had whispered in the Phoenix air that Tupac's father might surface to contest her claim on their estate. So many of Tupac's songs spoke of his very, wait, so many of Tupac's songs spoke of his being buried in a coffin, but cremation would destroy any DNA for testing should Tupac's father surface. It would also destroy any evidence of poison. Keep in mind that Harry O took sick immediately after being given a seven up by David Kenner during his last friendly visit. Harry O nearly died, but Lydia Harris was convinced her husband had been poisoned. Yo, this shit is fucking crazy. Yo. Is a wiretap. Wait, hold on. Wiretap of corrupt rampart cops. Number 18. Get rid of the guns. Tim Brennan excludes Danny Pat. From the list of the bloods. Reggie Wright Jr. talks to his father about the upcoming raids, gets information so that he can prepare the gangs for what was about to happen. They were able to steer the investigation to locations that had been swept before the raids occurred. These motherfuckers is dirty, bro. Holy shit. And this is from, if Reggie was going to regain Shook's trust, he was going to need to show him the ultimate grand gesture. As the hearing approached, Reggie and Ken appeared to be working hard to secure Shook's night freedom. They also appeared to have a major setback when it was learned that Frank Alexander, the only credible witness, had told investigators that Shook had kicked Orlando Anderson. Reggie had made it very public that Frank was now a rat, a snitch, and that he should be killed. Those rumors got back to Frank quickly. There were many of Frank's friends offering confirmation. Death Row Records want you dead, Red, dead. Reggie even threatened Frank directly. 
What are you and your wife going to do? Going to hide it? Oh, shit, bro. Wait, where is the part? Suge ain't stupid, bro. Suge is not stupid, y'all. Suge figured it out. Suge figured it out. What, what number is this? Number 11. Number 11 is what? Frank Allen's in an interview with Brent Becker. Under the plan, Ken and Wright Jr. had devised Suge's death was preferably, but should being incarcerated with no ability to under California law to conduct business from prison was a very secure position for them. They had Shug drain all of the working capital out of the bank accounts. They eliminated the account, financial records, and stopped all the activity within the company. The employees were not being paid and loyalty to Suge was whining. Still, Reggie wasn't worried about money. He said to Michael Moore, we won't be wanting for anything. He confided in Michael Moore because he knew he had no choice. He knew that Michael Moore had heard God come over to Rice Radio at the time of the Tupac shooting and attempted murder of Suge. They exchanged a glance. As long as Reggie could pay more, he would remain silent. Reggie invented work for more. He already had a full scale mop up in the aftermath of the shooting. Well, that didn't work. That didn't work. I said, Reggie, if you, you had, he had like 20 guys working security off duty cops. I said, why would you have all those guys over here at the hotel and have one guy at two on, with Tupac? Now, all the time Tupac had been out and I had been with him, I was always, I always went by myself. It was just me and him all the time. About two weeks prior, actually two weeks before he was shot, about 1.30 in the morning on Sunset up here, we saw the sheriffs rolled up. We were on Sunset and I can't think of the cross street, right? Where Sunset and West Hollywood turns into Beverly Hills. They wanted to go out clubbing. Tupac was driving the Rolls Royce with, with all the outlaws in the back. I was in the back of the car. A couple of guys came up along his car and they, in the early model Toyota sedan, dark colored, black guys, gang members started flashing all kinds of signs, whatever this and that. I am like, damn, yeah, I am by myself. I exit the car, you know, using caution, going up, I pulled my badge and I said, look guys, I'm an off duty cop. Just go ahead and get out of here. So they started all sorts of bullshit, this and that. And so of course the group with Tupac, they started acting, you know, come on, let's fight motherfuckers, this and that. So by the time, you know, I told the driver, I said, let me see your hands like this. No, man, fuck that. He ain't going to do this and he ain't gonna do that. I said, look, motherfucker, by this time I pulled my gun down by my side. I said, look, get your ass on. It is like this. So they turned around and he says, oh man, geez, he got a gun. So they sped off. Okay. I want to see the part where Shug fired Reggie. Right. 
Reggie allegedly was going to fucking shoot Kevin Hackey. Like, they was going to set that nigga up. I'm still bugging out that fucking Reggie father was with Buntry when he got killed. And they didn't shoot his father? What the fuck Buntry was doing riding around with Reggie father, bro? And Marv James be hanging with this nigga? You know, Frank had called me in early November. Reggie wanted him to come out to the office. So I was on duty that night. So I drove over there and I met Frank. And he says, you know, can you please stand by? I said, you know, I really don't want to get involved with this mess. So whoever the attorney was in there with Reggie, they knew that I was out. I was on duty. They knew I was out there. And he said, don't bring fucking Kevin ass in here because he is all pissed off. And so, you know, I figured by that time, of course, his daddy started leaking things in. Well, of course, I had been talking with the FBI and so on and so on. And about, I would say, March of last year, March or February, I get a call from Reggie out the blue. Kevin, I need a favor. Can you drive for me? This and that. And I'm like, what? Can I drive for you? I said, Reggie, what do you think I am? Fucking stupid? I said, you know me well enough to know right now. I said... If you want to do something to me, you go, you want to go ahead and take me out. I said, be a man. Take me out. Because he knows if he comes up against me one-on-one, -on -one, he will lose. Reggie says, oh, fuck you, motherfucker. I can have you killed at any given time. I, I said, Reggie, you know where I'm at? I said, you know it's, a, you know, it's your ball game. Do what you got to do. But as I said again, hey, he is trying to set me up. He hadn't talked to me for four or five months. He said I was a snitch, the whole shebang, this, that, this, and that. And then all of a sudden he calls me up and he wants me to drive for him? You know, I'm surprised Reggie ass is not in prison. I know he used to hold money. I know he used to handle shit handle shit man listen bro where is the part we should let reggie go This shit is crazy, bro. That's right here. Now, here you go. Three days after Pog died. Watch officers Jetta and Yamato were working a crime suppression detail to address gang activity problems at Death Row Records. 18730 Oxford Street, Suite 211. Officer Jetta spoke with the head of security at Death Row, Reggie Wright Jr., and was informed by Mr. Wright that since the death of Tupac, Marion Suge Knight was now using gangsters from Compton as his own personal bodyguards and that they were armed. If Reggie was going to regain trust, oh, 
what is it? The line before. Paragraph before. But what wasn't certain was who was going to run death row records. After the shooting in Vegas, but before Suge's arrest, he was using his inner circle as bodyguards instead of Reggie Wright's or right way personal as was customary. After the shooting in Vegas, but before Suge's arrest, he was using his inner circle as bodyguards instead of Reggie or right way's personal as was customary. Reggie saw this as an opportunity to snitch on Suge by telling police about his clear probation violation. This is some mind blowing shit. Suge realized once he saw allegedly Ralphie L. Perez in that car doing the shooting, not Keith E.D., not Orlando Anderson. He knew to get the fuck away from Reggie, bro. He knew it. This nigga Reggie's a super fucking snitch. This nigga out here be talking, calling people snitches. This nigga's telling on everything, bro. Reggie said, uh, oh, Reggie said he ain't know Rafael Perez and David Mack, right? They ain't never working death row, right? But I showed y'all. We got six witnesses, right? Trady, Suge Knight, Layla, C Style, Joe Cool, Chief Parks, right? Here go another witness. Turn that around so the camera can see it, and tell me whether you can identify the folks in that photograph. Uh, this person right here is uh, was a sometime bodyguard, Rafael Perez. Uh, this is uh, David Mack. I can't remember this cat's name right here. Okay. Did That's you see that person before? Yes, I've seen him before, but I don't remember his name. Did David Mack, to your knowledge, ever appear to be performing either bodyguard services or any type of security work for death row. Yes. He he foundation, all the speculation. Yes, he, he, he was because at the club, Shug said, if I had any problems, go to him, Tupac. And Shug said, go to this other guy. Here. Is that how many witnesses that? That's one, him, Suge Knight, Layla, Joe Cool, C Style, Chief Parks, Jimmy Iveen. Oh, I just left him out. Who I'm leaving out, y'all? <laughs> How many witnesses that we do we need? How more witnesses do we need? And y'all still go and support this nigga, fake ass, Tupac loving nigga with a white boy with a Tupac channel? Like, imagine Tupac alive and he find out this white boy got a whole fucking page channel and shit sitting there telling Tupac stories with the nigga that allegedly got fucking Tupac killed. I don't believe y'all motherfuckers be sitting there watching and subscribing to this bullshit and all this evidence. Sugar in jail, Park is dead. And y'all niggas support this fucking cop? This crooked cop? Y'all niggas is crazy, bro.
How much more evidence do y'all need? Please tell me, how much more evidence do y'all need? And Buntry's mad at, I mean, Mal James is mad at Shook for his brother getting killed. But he's sitting there cool with Reggie. <laughs> yo. Yo, this shit is, yo. This whole shit is crazy. Why is Marv James cool with Reggie, bro? This shit don't make no sense. This shit don't make no sense, bro. I'll tell you, Reggie's a, ma a master manipulator, boy. He is a master manipulator, boy. This is y'all born first, nigga, right here. That's the white boy. That y'all sit there and subscribe to thinking Tupac fuck with this boy. Y'all think Suge Knight fuck with this white boy. Y'all niggas is crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. The Adam 22, the Vlads, this nigga. Y'all just love giving y'all black dollars to the white boy, but y'all don't fucking support your own people. I don't get it. These motherfuckers allegedly got pop killed. You can use your own discretion. With all the information you see, and y'all fuck with that? Niggas allegedly sent Suge to jail and get up there and tell Suge nice stories. Niggas killed Tupac and they get talk about Tupac stories, allegedly. Y'all niggas is cuckoo for, for Cocoa Puffs. With all this information. For all this information. I don't understand how these motherfuckers ain't arrest this nigga yet. I don't get it. I don't get it, bro. Yo, K, paper chasing, good looking. Yo, are you kidding me? I don't think yeah, a lot of y'all knew this or none of this information. I don't think y'all knew this information. I didn't. I still want to know who some of these people are. Who's this other guy they say got killed? Bobby, let's see. What's his real name? We go about to look these shits up. These killings. Bobby Finch. Let's see. Oh, shit. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Let's see what this got to say. 
the fuck just happened? No way in hell. Oh, okay. Why did they kill him, bro? Oh, shit. Okay, yeah, here we go. Rapper shooting leads to 22 arrests. That's a lot of niggas, bro. Right? Now, here's the crazy shit to me. All this shit happened in Compton. All these niggas get killed to everything. And Biggie wasn't even out there. Right? He wasn't in Vegas. Back then, niggas wasn't saying uh, Biggie killed Pac. So who was all the hatred for Big for? Leading up to Big getting killed. Because of the quad shit? Anyway, let's let me let me let's let's go through this real quick. Los Angeles blood spills in the aftermath of Tupac Shakur's slaying led to the arrest of 22 people yesterday and in raids involving more than 300 police officers from two states. Why it? You know what? Let me just read it. Three people have died so far in the gang violence in Compton, California, that police say was triggered by the September 7th gangland-style attack in Las Vegas that left superstar rapper mortally wounded. Las Vegas police assisted officers in the pre-dawn sweeps in Southern California from Compton to Long Beach, and they planned to question several of the suspects in connection with Mr. Shakur slaying. The motives for some of these shootings may have been in retaliation for the Tupac shooting in Las Vegas, said Compton Police Captain Stephen Roller. We felt that most of them are related. In all, there have been 12 shootings in Compton since September 7th, police said. Captain Roller said that in one of their three slayers investigated and raised, Bobby Finch, believed to have been a one-time bodyguard in the recording industry, was targeted in an apparent drive-by while waiting for a friend. This nigga knew something. Mr. Finch was shot and killed days after Mr. Shakur was wounded, but before the rapper died six days after the Las Vegas attack. The other shooting targeted two men who were working on a car at a carport. They were attacked Friday, September 13th, the day Shakur died, Captain Roller said. There, were, there are shootings, unfortunately, on a routine basis in Compton. Captain Roller said, we experienced a decrease in gain activity. They are shootings, unfortunately. Uh, blah, blah. Captain Roller says suspects are arrested. Wait, hold on. Where the fuck was I at? Oh, we, we experienced a decrease in gang activity at the time Tupac got shot. But we did experience an increase on certain sets of individuals. We zeroed in on those particular sets and the shootings they were involved with. Captain Roller said the suspects arrested Wednesday 
whose ages range from 18 to early 30s are being held on suspicion of murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and other charges in connection with the Compton violence. Las Vegas authority told Compton officials that they would be interested in talking to all of our suspects. Mr. Shakur, one of rap's most successful and notorious singers, was shot after attending the Mike Tyson Bruce Seldon boxing match in Las Vegas. He was hit by four bullets as he rode in a car driven by Marion Suge Knight, the head of Death Row Records, Shakur's label. That's it. Was Bobby Finch working for Death Row? Let me see. I got to leave this shit alone. This shit's too deep, bro. Lord have mercy. This shit is too motherfucking deep. Lord have mercy, y'all. Look at this shit here. Oh, God. This motherfucking rabbit hole is too deep. I got to leave this shit alone. This shit is too deep. This rabbit hole go way too deep. Look at this shit. Bobby O.G. Finch. Room in Southside Crip. Murdered by neck bone from the mob. Murdered by neck bone from the mob. Shouted out and living down in LA Park. First, first casualty of the mob South war after Pac was shot and rumored to be in the white Cadillac to be shot that way. What? What the fuck? Yo, bro. Wait a minute, bro. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, bro. Wait a minute. Whoa. This nigga was in the white Cadillac? So it was the police, bro. Allegedly, what the fuck? What the fuck, yo? Hey, yo! Bobby OG Finch, room in Southside Crypt. This nigga was a cop. Murdered by neck bone from the mob. 
First casualty of Mob South War after Pac was shot and rumored to be in the white Cadillac that shot him. Most likely mistaken for his next door neighbor, SSC, Corey Edwards. Who's Corey Edwards, bro? Hold on, I gotta see what y'all saying over here because there might be some Compton people over here. Russell Poo was right all along. Sounds like some police shot him. No, he wasn't. Hmm. Mm -mm. Who is that? Just when you thought it was over, bam, damn. Great work choke. Is this the guy Gaddafi saw? Reggie knocked him off before it got too deep, allegedly. Remember the largest run, the gangs and the police. Russell Poole is a legend. He had it all figured out a long time ago. Told you Keefe D was rolling with the crooked cops. I live around the corner from Bobby. They hear him after dropping off his daughter. Bobby wasn't in the car and never hung out with them. Mind blowing. Hell nah. That's cop on cop crime. Dirty dishes. You got to hit me up on Instagram or, or email me. Choke no joke at Gmail. That's Orlando, homie. Southside Crips. The dude Fox interviewed. That's why Suge never spoke because it was the police. That, that I believe that ten thousand percent. This shit is bogged out, bro. Corey Edwards is the dude that owns the house where they found the gun in the backyard. The guy that said he saw Orlando at the bar, that's who Corey Edwards is. The one that said, yeah, and that other shit, that, uh, that's how Vegas knew it wasn't Orlando. Because they knew they had video of him at the bar at the time of the murder. These murders ain't solved because the police did it. Yeah, of course. You know how much they would get sued? If a fucking wrongful death of the police killed Tupac and Biggie? L.A. would be broke. L.A. would be broken in America. Yo, this shit right here. Somebody said, how we know Neckbone killed him? I usually don't read comments, but on this one, I am. How we know Neckbone killed him? He was a known hitter. I talked to some people from Compton. Jesus Christ, that's fucked. Murder in front of his own, his mom and 10-year-old daughter. And for nothing, they got the wrong guy. Neckbone, Trey, Heron, Buntry too. Big Rock got knocked, but this one's for you. I hit the studio and drop a Jew, hoping it pay. Getting high, watch your time fly to live and die in L.A. Big Rock was locked up because of a home invasion he did with Poochie, G, Buntry, Juju, and Lip Dog on a bounty hunter after one of them kidnapped Dog. G told Poochie to shoot someone, but Poochie said his gun jammed. Rock took Poochie's gun and shooting it, and it worked. And he ended up getting his second strike for it. Trey was the homie who got his medallion snatched by Baby Lane. Started the beef. Actually, I think Southside was already pissed when Pac said, and if you want to be down with Bad Boy, then fuck you too. And hit him up because they thought he was doing he was coming at them because they worked security for big. Bunchy chased the Cadillac and returned fire but didn't manage to hit any of them. Montreal and Heron would both get killed 
and Looters Park, Fruit Town War. Let's see something. What is this here? This shit is way too deep. All right, let me see. This is. All right, let me read this just just because. Tupac Amari she called hip hop shining serpent was gone. And now so was Bobby Ray Finch under a cloudless stretch of L.A. sky. Finch's family, Finch's friends and family made a mournful circuit around Inglewood Cemetery. Low-flying planes swept tremendously shadows over the Soma procession of mothers and off-duty officers neighbors and fellow bodyguards, former gang members, and present day Colos, a girlfriend robbed of a lover, a daughter robbed of a father, and a reporter trying his best to look inconspicuous at an intimate family gathering. I've been covering this story since September 7th, 1996, when the hail bullets tore into Tupac's body for the second time and final time in his brief life. Now, September 18th, six days after Shakur's death, I looked on as one by one, Bobby Finch family filed and stared into his lifeless body. The carnations lying on the casket, as well as the casket itself, where baby blue seeming to call, confirm reports that Bobby was a member of the Mark Gang, the Southside Crips, and was killed in retaliation for Tupac shooting. One of, on the morning of September 11, Finch, age 30, was murdered in front of his mama house in Compton while sitting in, sitting at the wheel of his new Acura. He had just dropped off his 10-year-old daughter at school and was heading to the gym for a workout. According to a witness, a Honda Civic hatchback pulled up alongside Finch and shots fired, and shots were fired. He was taken to Martin Luther King Medical Center with multiple chest wounds and pronounced dead minutes later after arrival this was a case of mistaken identity bobby wasn't no gang banger he wasn't part of that lifestyle said LaShawn smith godfather bobby's daughter in frustration look he told me if you live in the area you know people around here if somebody in the neighborhood did something wrong, the entire neighborhood will suffer the consequences. The whole neighborhood is at risk. When the gangs do shit like this, they go after the ballers. Explain LaShawn, high rollers, blah, blah, blah. Nigga, they got money. We don't. We know what high rollers. They ain't aim to take out the money first. Because Bobby had a nice car, they assumed he was a baller. He was a bodyguard, but he didn't work for none of them rappers. He had nothing to do with any of this. Finch was one of the fatalities among 13 shootings. Police say resulted from the attack on Shakur and Knight. The two other dead men, Timothy Flanagan, and Marcus Child were believed to be 
Pyru Bloods, one of the survivors, a Southside Crip leader named Darnell Brim, was also ambushed in a convenience store and shot several times. An innocent bystander, 10 year old Lakiza McNeese, caught a stray bullet in the back. Damn. When the shooter approached Brim's fallen body, gun outstretched to his finish the job, he saw Lakiza wounded form lying beneath Brim's. He paused and then walked away without firing. As I stood in the back of the church at Finn's funeral, listening to a young woman sing the last stanzas of Precious Lord, someone grabbed me by the arm and pulled me out of the service. He was a, he was a hulking, off-duty LAPD officer, one of several cops regularly employed by death row as security guards. He recognized me as one of the reporters who stood vigil outside the Vegas hospital where Tupac took his final breaths. What are you doing here? He whispered, his eyes darting, just trying to find out what's going on. I hope you realize you're playing a dangerous game. What do you mean? Just be careful with what you write. And so it has gone for months. Cryptic warnings demanding an anonymity, lies and whispers. Few in LA have been willing to speak on record about anything relating to the ongoing death row saga. Vegas police have alternately affirmed and denied that they have any suspects in Tupac's murder. They yet they have yet to arrest anyone, even though a 29-year-old Compton resident named Orlando Anderson was reportedly heard bragging about his involvement in, after the shooting. I don't know what this is. In a large photo, Barnes gave the correct names on all the subjects your affiant knew. However, when Barnes got to a person your affiant knew as Orlando Anderson, AKA Little Land or Lane, he gave a false name. Your affiant told him that your affiant knew the subject to be Orlando Anderson, and he denied it on a couple of occasions. Finally, Barnes said, yeah, that's Lando. Your client asked why he lied, and he said, because he is my cousin. Is this Keefe D? Your fine recall seeing Barnes driving a brown vehicle in the 1300 block of East Glencoe and, the, and that Anderson was the passenger in the vehicle about an hour before going to 1315 East Glencoe. On September 11, 1996, approximately at 9.05, Bobby Finch was killed in a driveway shooting at 513 South Mayo. Southside Crip area. Informants have told police that mall pie rules are suspected in this murder. They suspect the suspect was described as a black male in a tan or red 7080s Honda Civic hatchback. On September 11, 1996, 1500 hours, a confidential, reliable informant, CRI, contacted Sergeant Baker. The CRI observed two male blacks drive a late model white Cadillac 
into a automotive shop. at White and Alondra. The Cadillac appeared to be a rental. The informant recognized one of the occupants to be Monk, Jerry Barnes from the Southside Crips and gave a matching description of Barnes. The informant made this observation on Monday, September 9th, 1996. Wait, hold on. Who's Jerry Barnes? Homicide, we viewed a videotape of the assault on a male black who I recognize to be Orlando Anderson, AKA Baby Lane, by Tupac Shakur, Marion Shignite, and other death row records people. The tape was of the events after the Mike Tyson fight at the MGM Hotel. Las Vegas Police Department advised that a newer model white Cadillac possibly followed the entourage of vehicles after the fight. and was the, was the vehicle used by the suspects who shot Tupac Shakur. Las Vegas Police Department advised that the vehicle contained two to four male black occupants. They have received several anonymous calls, mostly saying Baby Lane shot Tupac. They also received calls saying Donnell Brim, Bobby Finch, and Davian Brooks were also in the vehicle with Baby Lane. Yo, I'm done with these niggas, bro. Where the fuck is these other niggas, bro? Where is these other niggas? Who is these other niggas? What was the other niggas' names? Um, Terry, Big Dre. Hold on, let me find out Keefy D real name. I need Keefy D real name. Wayne Keith Davis. Dwayne Keith Davis. Now, who are they say in this car again? Two to four male black occupants. They have received several announcements called mostly saying Baby Lane shot Tupac. They have also received calls saying Darnell Brim, Bobby Finch, and Davion Brooks were also in the vehicle with Baby Lane. Keep it in getting arrested, bro. This nigga was lying, bro. Las Vegas police department said that they received a few more calls saying that Terrence Brown, a.k.a. T. Brown, the Southside Crip, and Davian Brooks were in the car with Baby Lane. Davian Brooks, that don't, that's not Dwayne Keefe Davis. What the fuck is going on here, y'all? It's a lot of lying going on here, yeah? Keefe D ain't going to jail. Las Vegas to Pete. Who is Davion Brooks? Davion Brooks. We're in the car with Baby Lane. And who's calling, giving these motherfuckers these niggas' names in Vegas? Reggie? Like, who the fuck would know out of all the niggas that was in the car, nobody from Suge's side would know these niggas? Well, they would. Don't get me wrong if they, they was known. But who would be making these phone calls to give up these names? And Keithy D name ain't in this shit. Keithy D name is not in here, y'all. We got like six names. Ain't none of them Keefe D. Las Vegas Police Department had a Las Vegas address on Davion Brooks. The address was subsequently 
I, I'll butcher that word every time. Subsequently, subsequently checked by Las Vegas Police Department. Brooks had moved the first week of September 1996. The apartment leases was the apartment lease was David Keith, aka Tank, an employee of the MGM Hotel in Las Vegas. That ain't Dwayne Keithy Davis. Brooks had moved the first week of September 1996. The apartment lease was David Keith, a.k.a. Tank, an employee of the MGM Hotel in Las Vegas. And the same person filled, interviewed after, and the same person filled, interview after a Compton shooting on September 10th, 1996. Las Vegas Police Department record revealed Keith was arrested for a warrant on September 11th in 1996 in Las Vegas. The Nevada, Nevada, Nevada license plate number 278GSM on the vehicle drive by David Keith and Compton came back to the 20, 2109 Haviland. So they did find out the license plate of the fucking Cadillac, right? Or is this just David's car, David Keith's car? The Nevada license plate 27A GSM on a vehicle drive by David Keith and Compton came back to the 2109. Caliber rounds recovered from 1315 East Glencoe and confirmed that 40 caliber shells casings were recovered at the Tupac Shakur shooting scene. There might be a page missing. Las Vegas Police Department provided us a copy of a visitor's log to the security gated community that Marion, Marion Shug Knight lives in, in Las Vegas. For the dates of September 7th, 1996 through September 8th, 1996. Your affiant noted that after the shooting of Tupac, later on September 7, 1996, early morning of September 8, 1996, several persons arrived at Nice residence. Some of the persons checked in were Frank, Hen Dog, Buntry, Neckbone, K Dog, and Trey. Some of the same persons, some of the same persons. Confidential informant number three had reported were in the honorage during the shooting. On the morning of September 18th, 1996, Bobby Finch's funeral was held. Your client was contacted by an anonymous informant. The informant said he grew up with Finch and that Finch grew up in the Southside Crip area and had Southside Crip friends. The informant said, the mob killed French. Anderson came out of 1409 South Burris and got into a blazer and left the location. Officers lost the blazer, which was heading eastbound out of the city. The blazer license is registered to... Thais Lanier, I ain't gonna read all the addresses and shit. Bellflower, who also lists an address of blank, blank, blank. The full size black Chevy Chevrolet Blazer matches the description of the suspect's vehicle used in the homicide of Albert Webb on April 12, 1996. The informants have told your client that Orlando Anderson and DeAndre Smith committed this murder and were both armed with Mac 11 type weapons. On September 19, 1996, the Mac 11 assault pistol recovered from 1409 South Burris 
along with cases recovered from the homicide, uh, cases, blah, 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 and attempt murder, blah, 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 numbers, were submitted to the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department Crime Lab for comparison. On September 19, 1996, your client was contacted by the Deputy Fournier, Fournier, by Deputy Fournier, whatever his fucking name is. The department was contacted by informants who stated that Orlando Anderson had four guns in his possession. The Southside Crips have access to approximately 30 guns stored in an unknown apartment in the Atlantic Drive Crips area, and several AKA 47 rifles were just delivered to the Mall Piru area. Deputy Fournier also contacted another informant who said that That same information. Okay. Mistaken for his next door neighbor, SSC Corey Edwards. Let's see what they say. Uh, Lady guy himself got out of there. Basically, they threatened him what was going to happen. And of course, Hodgman's office started calling him down once they got going to go ahead to revoke Shook's probation. Hold on, I need to blow this up. All right. Wait, what to say? Uh, Shug's probation. So basically, he got threatened. You know, Frank. You know, Frank had called me in the early November. Reggie wanted him to come to out to the office. So I was on duty that night. So I drove over there and met Frank. I read this. Yeah, I read this. Yeah, that's that for that. This shit is crazy, bro. This shit go. This is this is yo. I don't know how they said like y'all y'all killed up all this shit and y'all blaming Biggie. Wait, 
Let's see this. I'm still under fair use, y'all. Here's my copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act allow 1976 allowance made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, common news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair 